welcome to let's talk about jesus with favor adibawali i'm so glad that you're here today welcome if you're returning welcome and if you're new welcome <laughs> i know that we will grow together and our lives will be changed and transformed before we continue let us pray our father and our god we bless you we worship you we are doing thank you for all that you are daddy god even as we sit at your feet today, I pray that you will change us. I pray that you transform us. I pray that you will help us be more like you. Change our hearts, O God. Let your words cut us, O God, and teach us, O God, to be to be lights, O God, representatives of you on the earth. Bless you, Lord, because you are holy and forever you are God. In Jesus' name I've prayed. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. So, like the topic um, or the title of this video says, I've, I've um i've had a miscarriage will i be able to conceive again hallelujah yes you will be able to conceive again let's start from there there's nothing to be afraid of there's nothing to um fear you will conceive again now oh, i had a miscarriage my, my baby is my rainbow baby my daughter is my rainbow baby i had a miscarriage um around me last year and i kept asking myself will i be able to conceive again Will I be able to conceive again? I even spoke to somebody who had like, um, she also had miscarriages, right? And I, I spoke to a number of people actually. And they're like, no, one person who told me that I had one miscarriage, that's her story. And um, when she wanted to have children, she just kept having children. <laughs> so I just want to encourage you today not to be afraid, not to despair, not to fall into that hole of um thinking that you will never have children you will have children amen you will have children one of the things um i want you to know is that god did not cause it god did not cause the miscarriage no so don't blame god don't be like oh god i'm serving you and how could you let a miscarriage happen blah 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 mm -mm. God did not cause it. The Bible tells us in 2 Corinthians 4 verse 4 that Satan is the God of this world. So you know who to blame. Everything, everything <clears throat> bad that happens, you know who to blame. You know, God is all good and the devil is all bad. Praise God. And so m many times we are confusing rules and switching rules. But no, God is very good. And he, he imagine you have a child, right? <clears throat> All right, when you have that child that you're believing God for, you definitely would not want any bad thing to happen to that child. You know, I have my daughter now, and I'm looking out for her. I'm not, I don't, I, I'm trying to protect her and guard her and all that. First, God is God is the one that protects and guards, but then there is He, He has put, um, giving me responsibilities to make sure that I'm there for her. <clears throat> and if we who are evil know how to take know how to give good gifts to our children how much more our heavenly father so god loves you very much god is daddy god <clears throat> and he it's not his will that bad things happen to you so if a miscarriage happens know that he can use that for his glory he can use that situation for his glory so it's not for you to despair and say god how could you let that happen and all that stop stop it stop it it is not god amen so know who to blame Secondly, I want you to know that God loves you, like I said already. And he's willing to help you conceive again, if you will trust him. If you would stop being in despair, if you would stop feeling sorry for yourself. Oh, poor me. How could this happen to me? If it happens to you, who would it happen to? And I'm not saying that it's a good thing that happened to you or anything like that. But just know that God is willing to help you if you will trust him, right? There's no one in the Bible who trusted him for children that didn't get children except Mika because she dishonored the man of god <clears throat> but that's a story for another day sarah had children hannah had children everyone who just trust, trusted god for children had children elizabeth had children praise god so it is god's gift god our father our father is a good father and he gives good gifts to his children that child that you're expecting when child comes you want to spoil the child not spoil in a bad way you know what i mean like giving good gifts to, to your children right <clears throat> So I want to encourage you to know that your God loves you. Your daddy, God loves you. Look at God as your father. Praise God. And of course, we have our early parents, but there's some things that our earthly parents cannot do for us. But we know that our God, our father who loves us, is able to do exceedingly abundantly above all we think, ask or imagine according to the power that is at work in us. He is at work in us. God lives in us, right? If you have a relationship with God, 
he lives in you all right he's his home the bible says we are his temple so his home is with you his home is in you and if god lives with you then his powers are working you and then he's able to do exceedingly he's able to do more than what you think ask or imagine so if you're trusting him for one child he's able to give you two children he's able to give you three hallelujah so i just really want to encourage you today one of the things that one of the words that i stood on because like you might already know there's nothing that god cannot do the thing that god cannot do does not exist and so while i was trusting god to take in again to conceive and carry my baby to full time one of the words i stood on because obviously if you're trusting god for something you're trusting based on his word if you trust god there's not god is not god's not obligated to do anything that is not in his word right so if you're trusting God, make sure that you're trusting him based on what is in his word, based on what he has said he's able to do. Of course, God can do anything, but know that God is holy and he will not be doing anything that is unholy. Praise God. <clears throat> One of the words I stood on is um, Exodus 23, verse 25, 26. Worship the Lord your God and his blessing will be on your food and water. And I will take away sickness from among you. And no one will be barren, no one will miscarry or be barren in your land i will give you a full lifespan hallelujah so your land now is your home mm -hmm. bible says none will be barren none you know if you're a worshiper of god if you worship the lord in spirit and in truth and you're not pretending you're not being a hypocrite right you're worshiping him with your heart he says he will bless your food and your water he will take sickness away from you and none will miscarry or be barren in the land he will give you a full lifespan so i want you to after this video search for words in the bible search for things that the lord has said promises that he has made concerning um concerning conceiving children concerning having children and all that look for examples where he gave women their children and stand on those words and believe him because he's able to do hallelujah god is able to do He's able to do exceedingly, abundantly, above all we think, ask or imagine. So, he's a good God that loves you very much. So, look for words, his words, and stand on them. And you will not be disappointed. When the testing, when it comes, let me know, okay? Alright, thank you for joining me today. Um, if this video blessed you, share and subscribe. And um, I'll see you next week. Bye-bye.